to page number 160. We have someone to introduce to you this morning. The precious lady at the keyboard joined our church on Wednesday night. She is now the official church pianist. Dunning on you and all that. <laughs> but great to have you folks here. Page number 160. <laughs> right now that for the next few minutes we'd set all aside that's going on outside of these four walls and I pray Father that your grace and your work would be done I pray Lord for those that are visiting with us we thank you we're honored that they're here help us Father to be a blessing to them and serve them and meet needs in their lives that we don't even know of I pray Father you bless the mess maybe one here today that is not 100% sure if they die today, they go to heaven. And Father, I pray that this would be the hour they would hear the truth of the gospel and be saved. Those that are listening on the internet, Lord, over the uh, over our website, over Facebook, I pray, Father, that you would work even in their hearts and in their lives. And would you be honored, glorified in all that's done and said today. And I pray these things 
in thy name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Page number 210 in your hymn book. Page number 210. Wonderful grace of Jesus. Now I'm warning you, this one gets high. I'm warning you about that. Just thought I'd say that because it does. Uh, but I'll let you sit down for it so you don't like, you know, get like and pass out. We don't want that. Page number 200. Thank 
you, Kathy. You're welcome. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. And oh, yeah, give her a round of applause. Thank you. We welcome her to our congregation. And it's amazing how God answers prayer. And uh, it's wonderful to have you here this morning. And a uh, couple of things. Um, continue to pray uh, about some things. Uh, I am, I am, uh, I have a goal set now for July, the first Sunday of July for opening back up our Sunday school program. Uh, we'll have some of the work done over here, uh, that, uh, uh, we need to do on the Sunday school rooms and everything. We, we took the opportunity to do some, uh, some painting and fixing and building over there and, uh, excited about it. During Sunday school, a little bit earlier, 10 o'clock for Sunday school, uh, plan on being here and uh, we'll, we'll be geared up and ready to go with that. Now, um, we are having Sunday night tonight at 6 p.m. We're having our evening service. We are having full complement of services. I am going to be out of town. I'll be preaching in Poston, Illinois, uh, Wednesday night. So we won't be here Wednesday night. So uh, 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 for prayer meeting, Bible study, uh, we won't have our prayer meeting and Bible study next week, uh, this coming Wednesday night, but we'll be back on schedule with that the following week uh, at 7 o'clock. Now, um, next Sunday is Father's Day, and uh, have a, uh, I don't, I typically don't preach for Father's Day and Mother's Day messages uh because uh if, if i get a lot of families in here half of you aren't going to be dads and uh don't want you to feel left out but i'll have a special message for the day and for the family that day and so plan on being here next sunday at 11 o'clock appreciate you being here this is typically the time we would have an offertory uh, have we would diff, uh, typically receive our offering? Oh, a couple of things. Uh, Brother Chad, we had a we have a family that uh, came in uh, right after we started here. Would you would you get a visitor's card to them, please? Back here, this gentleman and his uh, uh, lovely counterpart there. Uh, if you would get them, just uh, we're gonna we're gonna bless you. Uh, we're gonna have you fill that out for us, and then just place it in the plate. If you have an offering, uh, the plate is back here. We're not going to pass the plate yet uh, just because we want to be that much more careful and uh, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, just place, uh, if, if you filled out a visitor's card for us, place it in the plate back here right inside the door. Just drop it in the plate there and we'll have a record of your visit. Yeah, uh, it's uh, speaking of visitors, it's good to have Pam's sister with us um, and her husband, and they're visiting from Alabama. Now, see, folks, they drove all the way from Alabama to be in our services. What do you think of that? <laughs> and it's good that while they're here, they get to visit with their sister. So, uh, but uh, it's great. I'll be in prayer for Pam's dad, but Dave Mason, be in prayer for him. He's, he's not in good health. And he's struggling a little bit. So y'all pray for Brother Dave, not with us today. And and of course, pray for your country. We're going through some very difficult times. And so uh, you you know all that is going on. I don't have to explain it to you at all. You understand uh, the, the difficulties. It, we need to pray, folks. The pain is too much and the scars are too deep and the divide is too broad. God is going to have to intervene. We must pray for God's intervention in this matter. We must pray that the Spirit of God moves in His people. The old song, we, the old hymn that we sing, all is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down. Amen. We have got to see God move in our nation or we're lost. And humble themselves in praise and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven 
and will forgive their sins and heal their land. And if there was ever a time when God's people needed to pray, claiming that promise and prepare themselves to receive that promise, it's now. We need God to heal our land. And so continue to pray. A um, uh, couple more things. The uh, Baptist bread is our devotional that we provide for you if you have daily devotions. There's back here on our information table. Uh, the May June issue of, of uh, Baptist Bread is back there. You can grab a copy of that. There's free. Ladies Christian Womanhood Magazine is back there for you. A new issue of that. If you have not picked those up, they're right back on the information table, right inside the door. There, feel free to grab one of those. But we're not gonna we're not gonna pass the put that in the plate. But I do Miss Kathy because she's preparing an offertory, what she thought was an offertory, but I'm shifting gears on her up here a little bit. But I'm going to have her play the horse right now. <laughs> Number 208, grace greater than all our sin. I love the words to these old hymns. Listen to them and say them as you sing them. All right? Sing with me on, the, on page 208 on the first verse.
chapter 12. Now, what I'm going to begin reading is kind of in the middle of the story. And I'll fill you in uh, as we get into the message today. Um, I do encourage you to be back with me tonight uh, at 6 p.m. I've been a series of, I got one more message uh, on a series of messages entitled that's not in the bible and i believe it'll be a help to you uh to uh we we need to understand that there are some things that people are teaching you are in the bible that are not and it it, it affects our philosophy it affects our mentality and, and our our world view in a way that is unhealthy and, and unbiblical i want to help you with that tonight be with us uh, tonight, uh, and we'll, we've got one more message on the subject of uh, that's not in the Bible. And if you want to go back through our YouTube channel, Hope Baptist Church, Bettendorf, Iowa, you can see the previous messages. Uh, we're live. Uh, we're live streaming right now on Facebook, and uh, those are archived on there as well. Stand with me if you would. Second Samuel. <clears throat> Chapter 12, uh, forgive me, um, I, I'm looking at the, yeah, that's right, Second Samuel chapter, let's see where I want to begin reading. We're going to begin in verse number 15, we're Second Samuel, chapter 12, and verse number 15, let me read to you here today from the Word of God. In verse number 15, and the Bible says, And Nathan the prophet, uh, and Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth, and the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And his servant, the servants of David, feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, he spake, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken. Uh, under our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him the child is dead? But David 
When, but when David saw that his servants whispered, and David child was dead, therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said unto him, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he had required, he set bread before him, and he did eat. Now I want you to skip down to verse number 24. Verse number 24 in the same chapter. The Bible says, And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare him a son. And he called the name of uh, he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. Father, I pray you bless now the reading of your word. Use it for your honor, glory. I pray that your grace and your work would be done today. I pray, Father, that you'd be uh, near to every heart and every ear that is listening today. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will do to your honor and glory. Again, Father, if there are any who have never trusted Christ as Savior, let this the Holy Spirit convicts them and draws them. And they know Christ. And I pray in tonight. Amen. Thank you. Seated. Bible says, and David comforted. Bathsheba, his wife, and went in into her, lay with her, and she bare her son, called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. The Bible, Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou, sayest unto me, Bring up this people, that thou hast not me know, thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast I know thee by thy name, and thou hast also thou hast also found grace in my sight. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 2, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 16, the Bible says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I want to speak to you today on the subject of God's grace in the scars. God's grace in the scars. Scars. Let me pray for you. I told you we came into the middle of the story here when we read the passage over in 2 Samuel chapter 12. David, as you may well know, committed a great sin. He committed adultery with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. And in order to cover that up, uh, when he found out she was with child, he wanted to cover it up. He brought Uriah home, thinking he would go to his wife, brought him home to where David was supposed to be. Uh, and wasn't. See, the fall always starts before the fall. David didn't fall when he committed sin with Bathsheba. David fell when he wasn't where he was supposed to. The will of God, you're going to end up in a one way or the other. And uh, uh, they brought Uriah home thinking, oh, we'll just cover things up. That didn't work. And when he found out that didn't work, he sent Uriah into battle to be killed. I'm leaving out a lot of details, but I'm just giving you the groundwork for it. And uh, uh, he took this grieving widow, David took this grieving widow into his home, and he married her, made her his wife. And uh, she bore a son to David. And, uh, uh, you know, maybe there were a few people around that were doing the math that figured there was a problem. But, hey, everything squared away, you know. The, the other husband has passed away. God rest his soul. And uh, David, had the uh, venerable king that he is, has taken, uh, taken uh, uh, Bathsheba in. And now they're married. And uh, there's a little iffy there. But, hey, uh, maybe a little question. 
Prophet Nathan, and Nathan went before David, and he told him the story of a man who, who had much wealth, and and uh, in order to appear, and in order to entertain friends, he took one poor man's lamb, the only lamb that that man had, and he slaughtered it for his own benefit. David, being a shepherd, was very angry at that man and said, "This man will die for what he did, and he will pay fourfold." David paid fourfold. Nathan said, thou art the man. That could have gotten Nathan executed. You do understand that, right? Nathan is facing execution if David doesn't handle this well. And God called David out. And now we pick up the story and David said, I have sinned. And Nathan said, uh, you will not die for this. God has forgiven you, but you're going to pay for it. Now, <clears throat> there's a little boy growing up in the king's household. A little boy that was a product of a relationship that never should have been. A marriage that is questionable at best. And I wonder how many times the arms of that mother ached for that baby that she would never hold again. <laughs> and every time mama looks into the uh, eyes of that little child that comes running to her, she can see the scars of her past. And every glance that daddy takes into the eyes of that little boy could remind him of the devastating cost of his own sin. But wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I want you to note what the Bible said in our text in verse number 24. And David comforted his wife Bathsheba and he went into her life. Would she bear a son? Called his name Solomon, derivative of the Hebrew word shalom, which means peace. God is our peace. That's what his name means. And I want you to note the next phrase. And the Lord loved him. Every life that I come in contact with as scars. Every person that comes into this church, as, as we say in today's vernacular, everybody's got baggage. Everybody's got a past. Let me tell you about some pasts. Let me give you some illustrations about some people who have a past. In the 1800s, there was a Methodist evangelist, a circuit riding evangelist by the name of Robert Sheffy. And during one of his meetings, uh, he was called to the home of a family whose daughter was in labor. She was now only 16 or 17 years old and unmarried. And I got to tell you, back in those days, it was much more of a scandal than it is today. Well, that broke. Well, stop rolling around so you quit being a distraction. There. I broke a vase under here is what I just did. And in the midst of this scandalous situation, this young woman is in labor and that day Sheppy went over. And in the course of that day, Sheppy led that girl to Christ. And when the baby was delivered, Sheppy took that infant boy in his hands and he held him up and he prayed, Father in heaven, use this child greatly for your glory. And may he grow to serve and lead hundreds of souls to Christ. Sheppy left that town. He never saw that family again. He was a certain riding preacher. Over 20 years, over 20 some odd years had passed. He was in his home and 
a post was the, the mail, and he got a letter in an evangelist. And the letter said, Mr. Chef has admired your ministry. I'm an evangelist myself. You may not remember me, but you led my mother to the Lord. On close to the day I was born. You led her to the Lord and you they told me that you prayed for me. And I wanted you to know that I'm. In one soul to Christ. You know what that is? There are scars in that story, but there's God's grace in the scars. Uh, I'm reminded uh, back in the '60s. Back in the '60s, there was a in the on the streets of Las Vegas. There was a prostitute. She was probably only 17, 18 years old. Prostitute walking the streets of Las Vegas. And uh, <clears throat> there was a, 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 a church meeting, a Southern Baptist meeting taking place, uh, a, a revival meeting. And uh, somebody invited her to that revival meeting and she heard the gospel. And she walked the aisle of that meeting and got saved. And it was shortly thereafter, during a time she got into a church, they got her into a church. And there was a young man in that church that was discipling people. He was a ministerial student. And he began to, and she began to go to his discipleship class, and he discipled her, and he taught her, and they got to know one another, and they fell in love, and they got married. She was a prostitute on the streets of Las Vegas. Twenty years later, she's the wife of a Southern Baptist pastor, teaching ladies, teaching young women in her Sunday school class. You think there's not scars there? Oh yeah, there's scars there, believe me. But there's God's grace in the scars. I'm thinking of a man that I knew named Ke uh, Steve Currington. Steve Currington went home a few years ago. Steve Currington was a drunk. Currington was a drug addict. He was raised in a Christian home, went to a Christian school all his life. But he got tired of the rules. He was tired of conforming. And he went off into the world. <clears throat> and the world went off into him. Within a few months, he was a hardcore drug addict. And he just about lost his life in a car wreck. Just about lost his life. And a lady ran out and uh, he was driving through a subdivision. And his car crashed into construction. And he was nearly killed. And a lady runs out. She rushes out. She sees. She calls the police. She calls the fire department. They come out. And they rush this man off. Good Christian lady. And then she began to pray for that young man. She lost track of it. They didn't keep track. Steve Currington, while in the hospital, was visited. A friend took his Bible and he said, I don't know what you're looking for, Steve. But I know the, I know the truth is in here. That's where you're going to find it. And he began to read the Bible, and he came across that verse over in the Gospel of John where it says, Know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Steve rededicated his life to Christ. He got cleaned up. He got straightened out. He went to Bible college. He began to study for the ministry, and God burdened him for those <coughs> who uh, uh, suffered from the same addictions that he had suffered from. He got involved in his church there. A family uh, family was in the church, and he uh, they had this beautiful red-haired daughter. And uh, uh, they she, he uh, uh, met this young lady and uh, fell in love. And he was uh, uh, over meeting, and, and she sitting in the attic. And uh, he begins to tell about her test his testimony. He begins to tell about how. You know, he was, I, he being honest with what's going to be his future mother-in-law. And he said, he told her all about his testimony. He said, it wasn't far from here that I was involved in a car wreck and nearly died. And the woman got it. All the color rushed from the woman's face. She stood up and she said, 
this moment. She walked out of the room. Uh, he thought, I've offended her horribly. Come on. She walks in and she put, she unfolds a piece of paper and she puts it in front of him. It's a newspaper article about a young man who was in a horrible car wreck. The woman, she said, you said somebody came out and called 911 and got them out to she called she called the police and department and they came out and took you away in names she said yeah she said i'm the woman that called i'm the woman that called that day i'm the one that found you in that car wreck Steve Currington, before he died, built one of the largest, uh, one of the largest and one of the most effective uh, faith-based addictions programs in the country. Reformers Unanimous. They have chapters all over the country. Oh, there's scars, but there's God's grace in the scars. I refer you to the Apostle Paul. The great, uh, the great uh, member of the Sanhedrin, Saul, who persecuted the saints, who put Christians in jail. He said of himself in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, For I am the least of the apostles that am not me. That means I, I, I don't measure up. That I am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. You know what that is? That's not just the scars. That's God's grace in the scars. Now let me give you, that's all introduction. Message is only about five minutes long, but the introduction take a half hour. That's the way it is sometimes. Uh, look, here's what you need to understand. You will always have the scars. There will always be scars. I've never had a church member uh, that had never been wounded. I told, I, I was talking to uh, Kathy this week, and I was talking about our church and how our church has grown and how God has blessed us with some wonderful folks, wonderful members. I love pastoring here. I wouldn't trade pulpits with any man in America. I love it. I'm right in the middle of the world of God, and I'm loving every minute of it. I love being here. I told her I'm going to go out in our community. I'm going, to find, I'm going to find those families that, uh, you know, they have, they're, they're financially successful and they have their careers, their ducks in a row, and they got kids that are well behaved and everything's going great. I want to, I want to tell them that they won't feel very well. They feel like they fit in, you know. Ever, ever, I, I've never seen a person come through those doors that didn't have a brother or something. I've never had come into my congregation that wasn't in some way, somehow, wounded, hurt, burdened. There are scars. Amen. Psalms chapter 40. David said, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of a miry clay, set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. See, everybody can look at their past and they can see the miry clay. David could have focused on that. He said, you just don't understand the pit that I've been in. You don't understand the miry clay that I've had to go through. Hey, David didn't focus on the pit. He didn't focus on the mire. He focused on the rock. He set my feet upon a rock and established my goings, and he put a new song in my heart. Every one of us can look at that. The preacher, if I hadn't wrecked my life, Things would be different. Pastor, I made decisions that will hurt me for years, and I don't know how I will recover. Well, the first thing you know to understand is that those scars are not wounds. Wounds are wounds are still open. Wounds are still bleeding. Wounds can still fester, but but uh, uh, it's not a wound when it's a scar. You know what a scar tells me? It tells me you've healed. Hey, 
they give you a piece of philosophy that my mother gave me. My mother uh, spoke with her this week. When I was a boy, my mom gave me a wise piece of information. I had a bike wreck one time, and I tore my knees all to pieces. I mean, they were they were scabbed over from here to here. I mean, the whole knee was just all messed up. And I was sitting there one day in my little cut-off blue jean shorts, my 11-year-old self, and I was messing with it, and my mom would come in. And she gave me a piece of wisdom and advice that has carried me through every difficulty and trial that I've ever been through. You know, she said to me, she walked in and she looked over and she said, son, if you don't quit picking at that, it'll never get better. You let that sink in a minute. You don't quit picking at that, it'll never get better. There will always be scars. Say, I can't forgive myself for my past. David, the Bible says, he took some actions. Bible says in uh, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 14, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation, the assembly. Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 6, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Romans chapter 5, verse 20 says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You know what David did? What did David do after all of this? They were confused. They thought David would just collapse and die right there. And we got up. The Bible says in verse 20, then David arose from the earth and he washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. And then he came to his own house and when he had required it, they set bread before he did eat. I want you to look at what he did. They said to him, they were confused. The servant said, why are you acting this way? He said, we don't understand. David said, while, while the child was yet with me, I fasted and prayed. For adventure, God would heal the child. But now the child is gone. He said, I can go to him. He cannot come to me, but I can go to him. The Bible goes on to say that he comforted Bathsheba son. I want you to look at what David did. The Bible in the passage I just read, it says he arose from the earth. Don't live where you fall. Say, I've fallen. Don't live there. You don't have to live where you've fallen. You don't have to believe the lies that the devil told you when you fell. That you can never get up. That you can't rise. That you can't you can't recover. Don't believe the lies. I say one time, and I love this. They said, uh, uh, "Don't believe everything." I thought it was "Don't believe everything." Bible says he changed his apparel. The Bible says in. Uh, Isaiah 61, verse 3, the Bible says, To appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, and oil for joy, from, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Listen, I don't care how deep the wound has been, there is always something in which we can see the grace of God. You can always get up. You can always go forward. There is strength. There is life after falling down. There is life after uh, trial. There is life after devastation. And the Bible says, I'll take you. I'll take your, your I'll give you beauty for your ashes. I'll give you uh, an oil, an anointing. That's medicine. I'll give you the oil of joy for mourning. I'll give you a garment of praise instead of spirit of As he came into the house of the Lord, he walked with God. I've heard it said, the man who walks with God will always arrive at his destination. Say, but I failed. Well, get back up and walk with God. Get back close. Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto thee. Draw close to me, and I'll draw close to you. Look for me, and you'll find me. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. I'm going to keep walking with God. He sat down and he ate. In other words, he got back into the routine of things. And he comforted Bathsheba, his wife. Can I tell you that whatever trial, whatever devastation you're going through, you're not the Lone Ranger. You're not the only one going through it. There are other people who are suffering, maybe from the same thing that you're suffering from. And there's something to be said for somebody who can, uh, if there's something to be said for somebody who's wounded, who can find the strength and the grace to treat the wounded. See, it's one thing for me to sit here in my sorrow and in my pity and look over and see somebody else sorrowful and think, well, I can comfort them. It'll make it better. It will. Every time. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, who comforteth us in all our afflictions, that we who are afflicted may comfort others with the same comfort wherewith we ourselves have been comforted. He comforted Bathsheba. In verse 29, the Bible says, And David gathered the people together and went to Rabah and fought against it and took it. David, you know what David did? He got back into the battle. You know what we do? They forget God, and then they go through trials, and they don't understand it, and they fall back, and they pull back away from God, and they pull away from the church, and they pull away from the service of the Lord, and you need the church more than ever. When you're in a situation like that. That's no time to pull away from God. It's no time to pull away from God's people. You have to draw a knife. We have to draw a knife to one another. And that's where the church comes in. You know what we have, we have to do as a church? We as a church have to come together. And have compassion for other people's baggage. You look at somebody who's struggling with sin and say, there's somebody that needs to get their life straightened out. Or do you say, there's somebody that needs a friend. Have compassion on the people who are wounded. And those wounds can heal. They may be scars, but God's grace is sufficient. God's grace 
is manifested in the stars. So every head bowed and every eye closed. There may be someone here today and say, Preacher God spoke to my heart through the message today. Would you pray for me? Just look your hand up and say, Preacher God, steal my heart about some things. Pray for me. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Here in a moment, we're going to have a couple of verses of invitation. After word of prayer, the music will play. And it's your opportunity to come to this altar. You don't have to come to me. You can just come to this altar. There may be somebody here today that you just need this altar. You just need to pray. You need to get close to God. It's a good place to do it. There may be someone here today. Christ is our Savior. You say, Preacher, I, I believe in God, but the truth is I don't know for sure. I'm not 100% sure if I die today I go to heaven, but I'd like to know for sure. Would you pray for me? Just slip me hand up. I won't call you out. I won't embarrass you. We do things decently and in order here. But you say, Preacher, pray for me. I want to settle the question about my salvation. I don't see any hands raised, man. We're talking to a saved crowd. We're talking to a crowd of believers. That's wonderful. If God's dealing with your heart today about something, believer, the altars are open. Maybe God's dealing with you about becoming part of this church, whether it be by uh, statement of faith, transfer of letter, or by baptism, whatever it is. Maybe you're saved and you've never been spiritually baptized. Or you're seeking God's will concerning as you believe God would have you to be part of this church body. This is your opportunity to come. Whatever the Lord's dealing with your heart about. After a word of prayer, you come. Father, that's our message today. I pray you bless now. You know the need of every heart that's here today. You know the need of every person. You know the, the, the secret heartache that they hide behind that smile. I pray, Father, now that the Holy Spirit of God would lead and guide and comfort and heal. Give direction. Use us once again that we get back in the battle. Get back into the service of God. Bless this invitation now. We pray these things in thy name. Amen. As the music plays, the altars are open. You come today.
verse of invitation from the coaches of course invitation. This is your opportunity to come. Whatever the Lord's dealing with you about today, you come. dismissed in prayer here in just a moment. I'm going to ask Brother John Bunce if he'd dismiss us in prayer here in just a moment. As a set, plan on being in your place tonight at 6 p.m. And uh, uh, of course, like I said, Wednesday, no Wednesday night this week. I'll be out of town, but uh, we'll have prayer meeting when I get back next uh, following. Um, also, uh, uh, y'all pray for Brother Dave Curley. He's going to be out. He's going to have knee surgery uh, here uh, is it next week? Thursday. Thursday. So be in prayer for him. Uh, pray for me and my grandson as we're traveling. Uh, we're going to be in Illinois and then Indiana. I'm going to a men's retreat to speak there. And uh, so uh, pray for us. Pray that God will direct me and pray that I, I don't split their church or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Welcome. Welcome again. Thank you for being here. All right. We're going to be dismissed. But the John Bunch, would you dismiss us?